Welcome to Taiji's Kitchen. Today, I'm going to show you how to make chawanmushi. So I think chawanmushi is one of those dishes that everybody knows in Japan, but barely known outside of Japan. And this is also more of like a home cooking, and I think there are very little restaurants that serves chawanmushi as a dish. So the name chawanmushi comes from chawan, which means cha is tea, and wan is a bowl, so chawan is a teacup. And then mushi comes from musu, which means to steam. So it directly translates steam teapot dish. And what it is, is dashi stock mixed with egg, and that's steamed. When eggs are heated, then they firm up, and we also often put in different ingredients inside. And today I'm going to show you a very typical and very simple variation of it, but you can also be very creative what you put inside. And it's also a simple dish if you follow the right ratio, and it might be a little bit difficult in the first run to get the right ratio and the right timing, but once you get the hang of it, it's not that difficult. So I hope this video kind of give you a new idea for what you can make in your repertoire. Then, let's get started. Here are the ingredients for chawanmushi. So today I'll be making authentic dashi using kombu kelp and bonito flakes. Then I have eggs, and also to put inside the chawanmushi, I have here cut up chicken meat, shiitake mushrooms, shrimps, and also garden cress sprouts, just as a condiment. In Japan we usually use mitsuba, but I think outside Japan it's very hard to find, so I have these sprouts, but it's not crucial. I have here three ingredients. These are kind of like the typical topping, but you can be creative with it and put in whatever you like. Now let's prepare the ingredients. This chicken thigh meat is already cut up. Whenever I buy chicken meat, I usually buy a little bit more than I need. I have it frozen and I leave it in the freezer in case I need a little bit of chicken meat. So I can make oyakodon or use it as a topping for udon noodle. For me, it just kind of comes handy. And these are already cut up, so I don't need to prepare anything for that. And let's prepare the shiitake mushroom. A lot of people cut up the whole stem. These are also good to eat. A little bit fibrous, but I personally like that. The bottom part is a little bit darkened, so I'm gonna cut just the tip of the bottom off and then cut this up in four pieces like that, and also here. And these mini shrimps, you don't really need to prepare them, but you want to make sure that the intestines are gone. So make a slit. Yeah, these are gone. Sometimes when they're not prepared well enough, like this, make sure you want to get rid of these intestines because that would really ruin the flavor. So you can kind of see through like this. You want to get rid of that, definitely. So that is very poorly prepared. So you want to make sure you get rid of that intestines. And if the color of the intestines is kind of spread out like this, you might want to just kind of get rid of that too. Because that probably is not going to taste very well. Then this is also finished preparing. And for the garden crust, I don't need that much. That'll be more than enough. So I'm going to quickly wash this. That's not for that. Let's finish for preparing all the ingredients. Let's start cooking. Now let's make the dashi. If you want to be lazy, you can use these kind of dashi powder. That's also perfectly fine. When I cook for myself, I usually use these. But if you use kombu kelp and the bonito flake to make an authentic dashi, it tastes really so much better. You'd be surprised how rich the flavor is. I suggest you give it a try at once. And if you want to see a really detailed explanation on the dashi, then please watch my other video on how to make dashi. So this dried kombu kelp, you need to let it soak in water for at least an hour, preferably overnight. So that's what I have here. So here I have about 500 milliliter of water, or two cups of water, with about this much of kombu kelp. This is about five gram of kombu kelp. So I'm gonna put this water in the pot with the kombu kelp. Then I'm gonna turn the heat to medium and bring this almost to boil, because you wanna take out the kombu kelp right before it comes to boil. While we're waiting on the water to be boiled, I'm gonna measure the bonito flakes. So for about two cups of water, I'm gonna use about 10 to 15 grams of bonito flakes. Okay, so about that much. So as you can see, the bubbles is starting to form. So I'm gonna take out the kombu kelp. I'm gonna let it come to boil. Now as it comes to boil, it starts out building a little bit of scum. I'm gonna take that out as well. And now here I'm going to turn the heat off. And then this I'm going to put in the bonito flakes. And to this I'm not going to do anything and just wait for one minute. So 
So a minute has passed, so this is ready. Now we're going to strain this using a paper towel. And don't squeeze this, but instead you want to let it kind of drip on its own weight. And then we have here authentic dashi. And then I'm going to give it a little try. Excuse me for slurping. Oh, so savory, so rich in flavor. So this is finished for the dashi stock. If you mix this with egg directly right now, the egg is going to get cooked. I'm going to leave it to the side and let it cool off. And for the leftover of the kombu kelp and the bonito flakes, I suggest not to throw them away. You can make another dish out of it, a type of tsukudani. If you want to know how to make that, you can watch my other video on that. Now that the dashi is cooled off, let's make the egg mixture. So I'm going to crack the egg open. For making this egg mixture, I usually use a measuring cup like this, so that I can measure the amount of eggs directly. Usually one egg is about 50 milliliter, and so I have two eggs, so it's about 100 milliliter. And for chawamashi, it's very, very important that you have exact measurement. And how you want to mix it, you want to mix the egg to the dashi with 1 to 3 ratio. So I have 100 milliliter of egg, and today I'm going to add in 300 milliliter of dashi. And here I'm going to put in 300 milliliter of dashi. So all together 400 milliliter. Okay, so exact 400 milliliter. I'm gonna go to mix. Make sure you mix this really well. And in this I'm gonna put in a pinch of salt. Really a pinch like this. Now let's put in the ingredients together. So in each I'm going to put in two shrimps and then also a little bit of chicken meat and also shiitake mushroom and let's add in the egg mixture. And when you do this use a small colander like this and then strain them as you do it. Because with the egg, it's inevitable to have these kind of, I don't know exactly what they are, like kind of like umbilical cord, uh, whatever they are. This kind of ruined the texture of the chawamushi. And in Japan, many families own a special cup that is designed to be used for chawamushi, the way they have a matching lid. But of course, I don't have that, so I'm just gonna use a tin foil and to cover it. This is just to prevent the water dropping inside while we're steaming it. Now these chawamushi is ready to be cooked. So typically chawamushi is steamed. Many households would have a big steamer. And so if you have a steamer, great, use that. But today I'm gonna to show you an alternative where you don't have to use a steamer. Have a kind of like a big pot like this and put about a centimeter of water on the bottom. And then I'm gonna put these cups right in here. Like this. And then put the lid on and cook like this. So I'm going to turn the heat to high and bring first the water to boil. So once this comes to a boil, I'm going to turn the heat to simmer. I'm going to cook this for about 10 to 15 minutes. So depending on the size of the bowl you're using for the chawamushi, or also depending on how much you're putting in, you just have to vary the time. If you have a bigger bowl, then of course it takes longer time to cook. If you have a smaller bowl, less time. So for this, I'll be cooking about 10 minutes or so and see how much it gets cooked. We're going to see if we have to cook longer. So the 10 minutes has passed, let's see how it's turning, I'm going to turn the heat off. Okay, this is looking pretty good. So you can't really see if it's cooked through in the middle. So to check that, put in a skewer like this and poke it, make a small hole and if out of that comes a little bit cloudy water, just like this. So I'm guessing this is not cooked through all the way in the middle. Uh, the liquid is a little bit cloudy, so I'm going to put this lid back on and turn the heat to simmer again and let it cook for another two minutes or so. So let's see how this turned out. Let's check the other one. We do a little poke. The liquid that's coming out of that hole is very clear. So that's a sign that this is finished. And if you happen to overcook it, then it'll puff off like this. That's something you want to avoid, but you just have to try a couple times until you get it right. And so don't give up too soon, just give it a try a couple times. 
and it's all finished, let's eat. When you're picking these up, please use some kind of cloth over it. These are very hot, so please be very careful so that you don't burn your fingers. So this is finished, I'm gonna put in the condiments on top. So these are finished, let's eat. Okay, let's eat this. So this may look like a pudding for many of you guys. It's pretty much the same thing. Instead of milk and sugar, we use dashi stock and salt. And of course, there's no way you can eat this with chopsticks. So I'm gonna use a regular spoon. Oh, perfect. Mmm, so delicious. Really great. A little bit with the chicken meat. Oh, also with the shrimp. Mmm, very good. Oh, this is so tasty. All oh, the flavor is really subtle, but really rich in flavor. Oh, so delicious. I love chow mushi. And as you may see, this will never entitle as a main dish. It's always like a side dish. You could have a main dish, not a vegetable dish or something, and then this would go with that. Mmm, so delicious. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, that was so savory, so delicious. Oh, that was delicious. Whenever I make and eat chawamushi, I always think of my grandmother and her home at the time because she made it very often and somehow my mother never made it for us. And so for me, chawamushi is like my grandma's dish. As you saw, making chawamushi is probably not the easiest dish in my channel, but it's not that complicated. And also depending on what you put inside, you can definitely make this vegetarian. And so if you have to do something new, I hope you give this a try. If you like what you saw, I'd love it if you could hit the like button so that this video can be spread out to many people. And if you have any feedbacks, I always love to read your comments. So please feel free to write anything down there. And if you have any requests, I'm always open for that. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye.